Hi everyone, welcome to another video with Katie's Shelf Life. I did a poll on YouTube seeing if you all wanted a recent book acquisition video or if you wanted me to go ahead and do my March wrap up. Um, I kind of did want to wait to do my March wrap up until next week just because I'm wrapping up a few books and I just wouldn't have enough time to edit and get it out. And the 31st is Friday and I'd rather wait until like March is actually done before I put that video out. So you all voted on a recent book acquisition video. So these are going to be books that I've purchased you know, all of February and pretty much all of March. Let's go ahead and get started. Remember, if you enjoy this video, you can hit the like button at any point while you watch. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Leave a comment. Um, let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought. So yeah, let's get into it. So I will say I've read so far out of the books that I recently bought. I did read two of them this month. We're going to go into more detail about both of those in our March wrap up. So, but the first is Evil Flowers by Gunhild Oyahog. This is the same author who wrote uh, Present Tense Machine, which was one of my favorite books from last year. It's translated from the Norwegian by Carrie Dixon. These stories, um, Gunhild Oyahog extracts the bizarre from the mundane and reveals the strange, star startling brilliance of everyday life. Oyahog revolts against the ordinary, reaching instead for the wonder to be found in fantasy and absurd absurdity. The first story, um, I will say, is about a woman whose um, part of her brain slips out while she's using the restroom into a toilet bowl. And that it's the first story and it's like the first line of this. And it just really propels you into this kind of wild surreal bizarre collection of stories but overall these were really surreal and quite enjoyable the next book that i already read was sorrow and bliss by meg mason i know this was really popular about a year or two ago and i for some reason just never wanted to pick it up and it was recommended to me by quite a few people especially after i posted saying that i wanted more books that felt like the movie worst person in the world and julie from linen librarian recommended this and i will say it has 100% that feel plus Fleabag, especially between the two sisters. The Fleabag sister relationship is 100% like I could only see uh, Fleabag's sister as the sister of the main character in this book. We follow our narrator Martha who has just turned 40. She used to work at Vogue and was going to write a novel. Now she creates internet content for no one. She used to live in Paris. Now she lives in a gated community in Oxford that she hates. Loving husband Patrick has just left because there's something wrong with Martha. There has been since a little bomb went off in her brain at 17, leaving her changed in a way no doctor or drug could fix then and no one even now can explain. Who can say why she is so often sad, cruel to everyone she loves, why she finds it hard to be alive than other people. I enjoyed this book a lot more than I thought. It deals with a lot of heavy themes of mental illness and what that can do to someone who is constantly misdiagnosed throughout their life and what the repercussions can be as an adult when you've learned to function one way. And it's very hard to reteach yourself how to be once you figure out what is actually going on. And I really, really enjoyed it. There's a lot of characters. It's got dialogue. I'd say it's not too, too heavy on dialogue, which I was kind of anticipating it to be. So I did enjoy this one. Next up is Everybody, a book about freedom by Olivia Lang. I read Funny Weather by Lang last month, and you all know that I absolutely loved that book and won't stop talking about it or thinking about it. So I decided I needed to pick up the rest of Lang. But this is a book about... Um, bodily freedom throughout history. It's an investigation of the forces arranged against freedom and celebration of the body's power. So Sigmund Freud, Susan Ta Sontag, Malcolm X, those are all going to be significant cultural figures that are brought up in this book. I have seen nothing but wonderful things about this and I'm very excited to get even more into Olivia Lang's essays. I just feel like there's always so much to gather from them and there's always so much extra to research and to find out and to understand. And I just can't get enough of Lang's writing. That kind of leads us into the next book that I bought. So after reading Funny Weather, a person that is const is brought up in a few of the essays, um, specifically around gardening and the AIDS crisis is Derek Germain. And this is Modern Nature by Derek Germain. Um, in 1986, Ger Derek Germain discovered he was HIV positive and decided to make a garden at his cottage on the barren coast of Dungeness. Facing an uncertain future, he nevertheless found solace in nature, growing all manner of plants. 
While some perished beneath wind and sea spray, others flourished, creating brilliant, unexpected beauty in the wilderness. So this is a diary on Germain's time living here and cultivating and growing and nurturing this garden in a place that was kind of inhospitable to gardening and growing a lush green environment. It's a reflection on his childhood, his time as a young gay man in the 1960s. I, I really, I love journals. It's broken up by month, exploring this new land, creating this beautiful environment to live in during a really difficult time, processing that time, and reflecting back on his life and the experiences that he has had. So these kind of go together, inspired by funny weather. Autumn by Ali Smith. I really wanted the David Hockney covers to these. Um, they're really beautiful. David Hockney was brought up also in funny weather and as well as Ali Smith. So this was kind of another in, a purchase inspired by funny weather. A seasonal quartet so I would like to hold off on starting this until autumn and then be able to follow the quartet through the season. I feel like if I start reading this now in the middle of sp or early spring it just won't have that same feel. I feel like the intention is to read these with the seasons. I know that this uh, tackles a lot of themes and it's a time around Brexit in the UK. I know there's a lot of discussions around art which I'm very excited about. This doesn't have like any sort of synopsis and I honestly don't, I, I know a little bit about it, um, not a ton. I've never read any Ali Smith before, so I feel like this is probably a good place to start. I really don't know. So let's go into some books that I bought when I visited my parents' side of town. There's a bookstore there called Copperfield Books and it's a bookstore that I went to growing up to buy all of my childhood books, especially in the summer I would go regularly. I've mentioned them before. And I picked up three books because I had credit. I bought three books and I got them for like maybe five, like all three for $5. So the first one is The History of Love by Nicole Krauss. Um, this has been out for a really long time. I've never picked it up. It's always been recommended to me. I feel like most people probably know what this is about, but 14 year old Alma Singer is trying to find a cure for her mother's loneliness believing that she might discover it in an old book her mother is lovingly translating, she sets out in search of its author. Across New York, an old man named Leo Gursky is trying to survive a little bit longer. He spends his days dreaming of the lost love who 60 years ago in Poland inspired him to write a book. And although he doesn't know it yet, that book also survived, crossing, crossing oceans and generations and changing lives. This has a, a book centered around being able to answer questions about humans and humanity. Yeah, so anything that has like a diary or a book, I'm very excited about. So I've heard nothing but great things about this one. Really, really looking forward to it. The other books, two books I picked were two by A.S. Byatt, who I've never read before. I know I've heard of this author, don't remember where or where I've seen um, their works before. I just saw the spine of it and this beautiful blue and was like oh what is that and then i realized i saw the word matisse and was like well let's pick that up and then i saw it's by as by it who that rang some sort of bell these are the matisse stories i don't know if i've ever seen this before i know i've definitely never seen this cover around and i just thought it was absolutely beautiful i think i got it for like a dollar maybe and yeah um as soon as I read the the little blurb that Byatt writes as if she were a painter, I was like, well, let's, let's pick that up. These three stories by the flamboyantly gifted author of Possession celebrate, I have heard of Possession for sure, um, celebrate the eye even as they reveal its unexpected proximity to the heart. Each of these narratives is in some way inspired by a painting by Henri Matisse. Each is also about the intimate connection between seeing and feeling about the ways in which a glance we meant to be casual may suddenly call forth the deepest reserves of our being. This is something I would 100% love. And the fact that they're each inspired by a piece by Henri Matisse, um, I think it'll be really exciting to pull up the piece that's kind of being referenced and look at it and maybe read a little bit about it and then read the story and reflect back on the piece and the connections that are maybe happening within the story. I don't know if that's how the structure will be, but I'm kind of hoping it is so that I can read it in that way. I think I'll get a lot of enjoyment that way. Also, I feel like sometimes I don't have a really clear idea of what these books are about. 
Um, a lot of these books that I'm showing you, I feel like more so than usual, this recent acquisition of books has been very much propelled by, I see the book somewhere, I look at it and I'm like, I like, I wanna pick this up. It's, I'm not lo really digging a ton into Goodreads or seeing what other people are saying about them. I may recognize a title or an author, but I'm just kind of picking them up based off like a feeling and not doing a ton of research. So I may not know, like I may not have a really clear idea or clear synopsis to give you of these books. Um, I'm just trying to give you like a little impression and kind of what my feelings are around it and maybe why I picked it up. So yeah, sorry if these are not as coherent as you would maybe like it. The other AS Buy It book that I picked up was Still Life, another really stunning cover. Um, at the same bookstore. This might be part of a quartet and this might be the second book in that. So I need to do a little more research and find out if there's other books I should read or if there's a first book I should read before this. If you know, um, leave me a comment because I would love to hear your thoughts on that and if it should be read in order or if you can read them out of order. This captures in brilliant detail the life of one extended English family and illuminates the choices they must make between domesticity and ambition, life, and art. Stephanie Potter gives up a promising academic career to marry Daniel Orton while her sister Frederica enters, enters Cambridge and her brother Marcus begins recovering from a nervous breakdown. So it seems like a cast of characters. Um, I did read that there's a lot on motherhood, on the choice of being a mother, art, all great themes that I love but yeah I kind of want to hold off until I know for sure how this should be read so let me know if you know. So the next book I picked up is for the Brazos Bookstore April Book Club. I'm finally going to join in on the book club. I worked there for three years and never joined in on the book club and I'm finally going as a guest in April and I'm really excited because I get to see some um, book club friends that used to come into the store all the time and I get to hang out with them and talk about books and I'm very excited. I have Blood Red by Gabriella Ponce and this is translated from the St. Banish by Sarah Booker. This, is, this author is an Ecuadorian author and it's their debut novel. It centers on the female body in a radical exploration of desire, pleasure, and pain. These are stream of conscious fragments, which I love. We have an unnamed narrator. These are stream of conscious, fragments, unnamed narrator, <laughs> like, yeah. It recounts the aftermath of the narrator's failed marriage in explicit sensual detail. She falls in and out of love, parties with her friends, skates around the city at night, does a lot of drugs, and gives into her impulses. Her internal monologue is punctuated by bouts of tri trypophobia and obsessive cataloging of holes that empty, fill, widen, and threaten to swallow her entirely. Blood courses through her every encounter from periods, fights, accidents, wounds, sex, streaming to and from her holy fixation. Blood is a vibrant reminder of her physicality, a manifestation of her interiority, a link to memories and sensations until, it, until its abrupt absent cha absence changes everything. Um, I'm, I'm picking this up like, I think I'm gonna do like a little mini vlog of reading some tiny books even though it's not Tiny's month anytime soon. Um, I just, I wanna read this. Obviously I have to read it for book club, but also I have another tiny book that I wanna read and I'm thinking of reading them together. So yeah, look for that. This sounds great. I feel like a lot of people who watch my channel maybe would really enjoy this. So if you've read it, let me know. If you're interested in reading it, let me know. And maybe we can kind of chat about it as well. Okay, so let's get into some chaos. So <laughs> um, let's start with two. So I went to, Kaboom Books here in Houston. It's a really large, magnificent uh, secondhand bookstore. They have rare books. I mean, they have everything. Um, they are originally from New Orleans and came here after Katrina, and I highly recommend them. If you were ever here, please, please, please go. They're an amazing bookstore. Let's start with Lucy. So I picked up Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid. I've never read any of Jamaica Kincaid's work. I have seen Lucy bouncing around the internet and booktube for a while. I've seen nothing but positive um, reviews, praises. And when I saw this edition with this beautiful painting on the cover. So this book is about Lucy, a 19 year old um, quick tongued au pair from the West Indies who has left behind her island girlhood for a fierce awakening in urban North America. I think it's um, New York. Some people have said this is like the New York novel, like coming of age in New York novel. At first, she is dazzled by her employers, Lewis and Mariah, their four storybook daughters and their perfect marriage. Yet almost at once, 
Lucy begins to notice cracks in this beautiful facade. Even as she scrutinizes Lewis and Mariah's lives, Lucy is beginning to unravel the mysteries of her own sexuality, confronting bitter and haunting memories of her past. Gradually, she begins to untangle disarmingly complex feelings for the most important figure in her life, whom her mother, whom she both cherish cherishes and scorns. In Lucy, Jamaica Kincaid has created a captivating heroine possessed with clear-sightedness and ferocious integrity. I've just seen nothing but positive praise, and after reading that blurb, I, I totally see why. I, yeah, very excited to pick this up eventually. But yeah, I picked this up, and then I also picked up Paradise Piece by Piece by Molly Peacock. Um, one of my Instagram friends here in Houston, um, Brie, I'll put her um, account below wrote a really beautiful Instagram caption for this book when she read it and and it just sounded like something that I would really love and when I walked into the bookstore it was the first thing I saw when I went I usually go at Kaboom Books straight to the memoir and nonfiction section first and then I worked my way to fiction and this was the first book I saw and I immediately grabbed it. Molly Peacock is a poet and this is a memoir about her decision to be child free and what that can look like as a creative um, how does a woman talk about her life if it doesn't involve motherhood? How do people grow up if they don't have children? Yeah, I, as someone who is also child free by necessity and by choice, I, I love authors or artists exploring that theme. And then that leads us into our Rachel Cusk stack. So the other book that I bought, this is the last book that I bought at Kaboom, was a copy of Transit. I'm doing a outline trilogy summer of reading the outline trilogy summer. <laughs> I'm doing like a long form vlog for that. I really wanted to find the second and third books used. I managed to find the second. It's got this lovely coffee stain down the back and it's crinkly and yes. So I was like, well, I'm gonna take that. And it was the exact same edition as my um, outline. So I wanted to have the matching set, obviously. So this is the second book in that. Um, I won't give any details about it just because I want to read the first and it's a trilogy so I don't want to give too too much about this. I just know it's very interior, it's very cusk, and yes, that's that's it. That's all we need to know. That, um, that takes us into the rest of the cusk that I have bought um, in the past few months. The other book that I ordered from the UK was Marble and Metamorphosis by Rachel Cusk. This I could only find in the UK, so I ordered it along with Autumn. I, Renee's, so I read this book, her Instagram, um, and I'll also link Instagram and uh, YouTube channel below, which is a wonderful YouTube channel. And I saw this and I was like a Rachel Cusk that I've never seen. And, and of course I couldn't find it anywhere in the US. And I was like, well, I really, really want that. It's about art and marble and art. And I was like, let's find this. So I did find it. It contemplates the physical and cultural life of marble. It explores the ethics, politics, and symbolism of its use and deliberates over the spirit of the material and why some cultures so revere and desire it. And reflecting on the deep relationship between marble and human culture, it considers the social and historical function of the material throughout time. There's like a long form essay by Rachel Cusk that she wrote while on a trip to a marble bearing island in Greece, Greece's Aegean Sea. It's really, really printed beautifully and there's these beautiful photographs throughout that are all color, which I can understand why now this is expensive. Um, but I was like, I really, really want this. It's like an art book and it's an essay by Cusk. And it's just one of those books that you saw and you were like, you didn't even think you were just like, I know I want this. So I immediately ordered it. Very, very excited for that. The other two I picked up by Cusk. Um, the first is A Life's Work and the other is Aftermath. These books are highly, I use the word controversial in like a, it's like silly that these are controversial, but when these were first published, A Life's Work was published in 2001 and unfortunately still in 2001 and even now, we have a very difficult time um, appreciating and respecting different views of motherhood around motherhood. And unfortunately, Rachel Cusk got a lot of heat for this novel, a lot of threats. Um, I recently listened to an interview she did and she talked about the absolute insane death threats that she received after writing this book, not only from men, but also from women. And yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's just breaks my brain that people believe these things, but it is her writing about 
being a mother to two children and it's her brutally honest account of her early experiences of, my, uh, of motherhood. It's her education in babies and learning things about babies that she didn't know about caring for babies, not only with her own body, but her mind, sleepless nights, bad advice, and never being alone. It's a landmark work that has provoked acclaim and outrage in equal measure. Along with that kind of goes aftermath, which is her documenting the breakdown of her marriage. In the winter of 2009, Rachel Cusk's marriage of 10 years came to an end. Candid and revelatory aftermath chronicles the perilous journey as the author redefines herself and creates a new version of family life for her daughters. So I think I will read a life's work first and then read aftermath, but um, these are definitely gonna be read probably back to back. The last two, and these are things I bought over the weekend. I don't know why I was feeling super ambitious about one, but I picked up Duck's Newberry Port by Lucy Ellman. And I read a lot of large books. I read the Outlander series, which I've mentioned before, which are well over a thousand pages each book. This book falls just under a thousand. I picked this up on a whim, thinking that I would make it a project at some point and split it up into chunks of like 20 pages and read it over like the span of a year. I just got this weird itch and impulse to buy this and I did. It's just one complete run on sentence. There are no, well, there's some little breaks, but there's really no breaks. It is nothing happens, which I love. Um, I was like, there's a lot of things about this that sound like something I will like. An Ohio housewife contemplates her four kids, husband, cats, and chickens. Also America's ignoble past and her own regrets. She's surrounded by dead lakes, fake facts, open carry maniacs, and oodles of online advice about survivalism, veil toss duties, and how to be more like Jane Fonda. But what do you do when you keep stepping on your own son's toy tractors? Your life depend depends on stolen land and broken treaties and nobody helps you when you get a flat tire in the interstate. Not even, not even the abominable snowman. When are you allowed to start swearing? With a torrent of consciousness and an intoxicating coziness, Duck's Newberry Port lays out a whole world for you to tramp around in, but turns frightening and funny, a heartrending indictment of America's barbarity and a lament for the way we are blundering into environmental disaster. This book is both heresy and a revolution in the novel. This sounds great. I think I'm just gonna have fun with this, make it a little project. The last book I picked up is On Beauty by Zadie Smith. I unfortunately owned a copy of this and when we moved four years ago, I was like, I'm never gonna read that and I got rid of it and I'm really bummed. And I was like, I shouldn't buy it again, but I did. Um, so I've also seen this have a lot of praise online on booktube. I've never really dug too much into Zay Smith's writing. I tried reading NW a few years ago and it just didn't click. So I was like, let me give another shot. And just outside of Boston in the small college town, college town of Wellington lives a family that is anything but typical. Liberated by education, complicated by race, and hobbled by self-delusion, they're about to stray onto the battleground that divides personal belief from political conviction. On Beauty is Zadie Smith's brilliant, hilarious send-up of the culture wars that define our age. I do know also that this is a lot about art. It seems more, it's definitely like a novel. It's definitely more novel-esque than what I typically read, but sometimes you're just in the mood for a good story with characters and kind of a plot. And I saw a few people post like little excerpts from this recently and they just really spoke to me and got me excited. And I was like, I, I think this is a book I'd really enjoy. And I really do want to give um, more time to Zadie Smith because I don't think I gave her a fair shot when I read NW. I don't think I was in the right place. And yeah, I'm very excited. So I have a lot of books to read and I need to slow down. And But I just can't help myself. So that's all the books that I've recently purchased. I might be forgetting one or two. I have been trying to utilize my library more. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these, what you thought, if I should really prioritize one over the others. If you enjoyed this video, please like this video and subscribe and share it. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. I will be back next Friday with my March reading wrap up. In the meantime, remember to take care of yourself and to always be kind and I will see you in the next video. Bye.